Looking at upgrading your desktop CNC machine stock spindle to something more powerful? Stick around and I'll show you how easy it was to upgrade my Gen Mitsu 4030 V2 to this 710 watt router. Hey, Nick from Old Fashioned Nights, and today I'm going to upgrade my Prover XL 4030 V2 spindle to this 710 watt router. I recently picked up this Prover XL 4030 V2 by Jin Mitsu. The unit comes with this 400 watt spindle, but I wanted something with a little more power, so I picked up this 710 watt router from Jin Mitsu. The original spindle is 52 millimeters in diameter, whereas this router is 65. The nice thing about the 4030 V2 is that it came with this additional spindle holder of 65 millimeters. So I don't need to purchase the additional spindle mount, everything I need is with the kit. So before I install everything, I want to compare the loudness of each spindle installed. The original 400 watt spindle has a max RPM of 10,000, so we'll see how loud it is there. Now the 710 watt router has six different settings for their speeds as shown on the screen. When I have the router installed, I'll get the readings at each of these positions to see how loud they are. Now let's unbox and install this router upgrade. All right, let's unbox it and see what's in there. Packaging looks very nice. No sort of damage to the box whatsoever. Nice foam piece to protect it. We have an installation guide. There is the router and a power cable. Let's pull it out. We have our power cable fairly long which is nice. We have some extra brushes. We have some open-ended wrenches and we have our router itself. Like that the power cable is a two-piece so if something were to happen that it doesn't pull out the router it'll disconnect here and prevent any sort of damage, which is nice. You can see the multi speeds. I believe there is six, six, five, four, three, two, one. Each of those correspond to a certain RPM. And that's it. Not a lot to it, but everything was securely packaged. Doesn't look like any sort of visible damage on any of the pieces. So let's go ahead and get installed. All right, let's start by disconnecting the old spindle. Machine is unplugged. I'm gonna pull off the positive as well as the negative lead. Put that there. And I'm going to remove these cap screws. Okay, old spindle is removed. Now I'm going to take the new 65 millimeter spindle holder and I'm going to install it. Not fully tighten it, but enough to hold it in place. I'm going to lower the spindle holder to as low as it can go without triggering the limit switch. placing a block on the table so the router can be elevated to a good position that I can secure it to the spindle holder. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten the router into the spindle holder. Then go ahead and tighten the spindle holder into the Z-axis assembly. Make sure everything's lined up with the spindle holder, that it's nice and straight to the bed of the table. I'm going to jog the router up and down, make sure that everything's held in place and nothing's loose. Tighten 
time to plug in the router, open up the drag chain, and work on cable management. Now I'm going to disconnect parts of the drag chain to get the old cable for the spindle out and put the new router cable in. A little bit of a pain to get the cable wrap around, but it's holding everything together nice and firm. Now with the cables in the drag chain, time to get everything closed up and make sure everything works. testing the z-axis by jogging it up and down and I did notice that I don't have enough slack in my z limit whereas if I go all the way down it's going to pull out my cables so I'm going to have to open up my drag chain and get a little more slack for the z-axis limit switch. The z-axis looks good now it's time to jog the x and the y and make sure nothing gets bound up. Everything looks good, now time to test out the router. The router is installed, so time to do a test cut. Right now, with the way I have it, I have to manually turn on the router before I begin a job, then run the file. Same goes when the job is complete. The file won't turn off the router, I have to do it manually. That's okay for me for right now, but I'm looking at installing a way to have the machine turn it on and off for me. Look for that in a future video. So I have the original Genmitsu file provided by SaneSmart when I did my test cut with the original spindle. As in my installation video, uh, the file isn't scaled for the bit I'm using. I'm basically just looking to see that everything's working and not concerned with the quality of the cut. Now let's test it out. That's the video. The test cut went great. I used the same cut settings as my stock spindle, and I definitely feel like I could have pushed its cut rate and cut depth a lot more. I'll have to keep playing around with it to dial in its capabilities, but I'm thinking this will be a great upgrade to the 4030V2. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.